welcome to another episode of The Travelling Introvert. And today we're going to talk about The Travelling Introvert, literally. So I'm preparing for a trip. I will not be taking this trip alone, but I have realised that I do tend to act like I'm alone, whether I'm alone or not, especially when I'm flying. I have this I guess it's a ritual that I do when I, especially long haul flights. I love planes. So that's a side thing. So I will be the one at the airport early at the window, like taking photos, seeing if our plane's here yet, checking on my app to see where the plane is coming from. If there's any issues, if it's delayed, if it's been delayed for the past five days, knock on effects, making sure my seat is the seat that I wanted and a whole bunch of other things. But when I get on a plane, I, I understand being polite, but I'm one of these people that I'll be one of the first to get on because I like to put my stuff away. I prepare in advance. So helpful tip. You might have your carry on luggage, but there's stuff that you want with you, either in your seat pocket or by your feet. If it's something that's already in your carry on luggage, take it out in advance. You're normally standing in the jet bridge sort of waiting to get on the plane. So in that time, you can take out, so what I have is a bag within a bag. I have this amazing Eddie Izzard cake or death bag, which goes with me everywhere and I adore and I hope it never wears out. And so what I do is I pre-pack it with, you know, my, my book and my, my maybe my headphones or snacks or magazines or whatever it is I'm gonna need for the flight. I pre-pack it in there and then put that in my, my backpack. So then I can just take it out very quickly maybe when I'm waiting in the jet bridge or before. So then when I get to my seat, all I have to do is put my backpack and take note. Don't put it in the overhead compartment above your head. If someone's rummaging around in there, you won't see them because that you they might say that they're rummaging around in the bag next to your bag. If it's in the overhead compartment opposite where you're sitting, you will be able to see if someone is going into your bag. So I know everyone seems to put their luggage above their head and I get it, but safety wise, don't put it opposite. So anyway, so then you can put your bag up and then have your other bag with you when you, when you sit down, it's very quick and simple and stops you like standing in the aisle and rummaging around. And cause so many people do it, they sort of get to their seat. And if they're not in the aisle seat, they kind of have to throw stuff over <laughs> People in the middle in the aisle seats like, oh, oh, can you just take my bag? And oh, there's my headphones and oh, my laptop. Uh, you can prevent all of this by just doing it in advance. Instead of being on your phone or talking or, or just standing in the jet bridge, you can do these things. So my ritual, sorry, I got carried away. What I tend to do, I get my stuff out, I, I sit down. If I'm in an aisle seat, I don't buckle up because I know I'm going to have to stand up to let other people through. One thing I don't understand, if I'm in the aisle seat and you tell me that you're in the window, give me the half a second to get up and let you get through instead of trying to crawl all over my legs and get through. Like it takes half a second for you to wait while I'm like literally getting up. But no, a lot of people just kind of go, I'm there and then just like ram their way through. I will take my travel sickness tablets because as much as I love traveling, I get air sick. So I always make sure that I have bottle of water with me apart from Singapore because when you leave Singapore you can't have water so then I have to ask the FAs if I can have some water then I will moisturize the air in planes is very dry it dehydrates and so I will moisturize my face and any exposed areas of my skin also because it is uh, dehydrating and it makes my nose crack I get little tears in my nose until a friend of mine in Canada ch turned me into this amazing gel that they have in Canada because it can get super cold in some parts of Canada. And so they use this gel that hydrates your nose. So I, I put that in my neck, which people think is weird, but but it, it does wonders and stops me getting nosebleeds. So I'm going to do it. I will put on my my socks, my compression socks. That's the next thing I'll be doing. I have slippers, especially if it's a long haul flight. Some airlines provide slippers. Yes, in economy class. I know people are saying, no, you only get that in first. Asiana, if you ask very nicely, will give you slippers. So you have to go to the bathroom because no one wants to go to the bathroom with bare feet or socked feet or whatever it is. Uh, so I'll put those on. I will take my hair down. There's nothing worse. I get headaches if, if like my hair is up for a long period of time. So I will take my hair down. 
people can come in and out while I'm doing all of this. I'm quite happy to put people in during all of this. So I don't have to talk to anyone. I will be wearing headphones and not the, the big like over the ear ones. I'm, I'm not at that level yet. And they take up a lot of room, but I will bet I have noise cancelling earbuds, which are kind of cool. And so I will be listening to normally some comedy. I, I find that that uh, helps me forget about what's going on. And also I look like a crazy person because I'm just laughing randomly, which is also good for getting rid of people. And uh, what else do I do? Some people wipe down like surfaces with uh, wet wipes and stuff. I try not to put things in the seat pocket unless they're very, not very big, but like magazines, because you find that stuff travels to the bottom of a seat pocket and then gets forgotten or lost, or there's other things in the seat pocket. So that's why I have a separate bag. But that's kind, and then I will go through, there's some airlines where you can pre-pick your music and make a playlist, so I'll start doing that, or a movie list. But I, I'm very much in my own bubble, and I didn't realise this until I was travelling with someone, and I realised for like 90% of the flight, I ignored them, and not because I didn't like them or didn't want to talk to them, I was just, I have my thing, and, and that's what I do. It's, it's my travel ritual thing. And I'm always drinking water, and I have an app so that it, it tells me every hour to drink, especially when I'm flying. I, I might not use it as much when I'm not flying, but when you're flying, you forget because you're asleep or you're eating or you're watching a movie or it's just a real hassle to get a drink sometimes. So I have this app that will like vibrate and be like, and works, you know, if I'm in airplane mode, be like, hey, you need to drink some water. Hey, you should probably stretch now. Hey. That's another reason why I pick an RC because I can get up and walk around. Um, none of that deep vein thrombosis stuff. Hopefully, knock on. Oh man, none of this is wood. Um, <laughs> wait, yeah, there we go. Found some wood. So do any of you have things that you like to do when you travel? Please feel free to put them in the comments. Put them on the comments in Facebook. Put them in the comments in uh, my actual page. I'm curious because everyone has their own thing they do and nothing is right. Or, I mean, there's some things that are wrong, but there's no like good or bad way of doing something. It's what's good for you and everyone's experience is different. For example, the person that I travel with, they hate getting on the plane first because they're sitting down and they're cramped because they're tall. I'm tiny. Well, I'm not super tiny, but I'm tiny enough that like seats are okay for me. So they'll get on last. They like having their bag at their feet, but they complain about foot, um, like, space but they like to know where their bag is and they, they have important stuff in there so I get why they keep it there and sometimes actually for me it's nice to have a bag by your feet because you can lift you can rest your feet on it which can alleviate some of the pressure on your legs and stop them feeling tired yeah everyone travels differently nothing is is you know right or wrong it's just how you travel so I'd love to hear more about how you travel thank you for listening to the traveling introvert and have a great rest of your week